Hello everyone, my name is Marlon Blankwart. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since July of 2013, and I'm here today to give a presentation on how significant the role of a type 3 is on a type 1 diabetic's diabetes management and support system. To start, what is a type 3? A type 3 is a person who a type 1 diabetic can always count for their diabetes no matter the place or the time. For me, my main type 3 is my girlfriend who had no idea what type 1 diabetes was at the time when we started dating back in January of 2021. So I made this PowerPoint presentation to teach her more about what type 1 diabetes was and how I personally treat it. During one of my most recent appointments with Dr. Edelman, who is my endocrinologist, we thought it was a good idea for me to make a presentation for type 1 diabetics who have significant others who are struggling to understand what type 1 diabetes is. Because let's be honest, type 1 diabetes is a tough disorder to grasp, let alone understand. A little bit about myself though. I was diagnosed with diabetes when I was 13 years old and being the first diabetic in my family, the first couple of years were challenging because it took a lot of trial and error in order to get my blood sugars under control. I'm currently finishing my master's degree in neurobiology at UCSD, but my ultimate career goal is to become an endocrinologist like Dr. Edelman and Dr. Pettis. I'm also quite active in that I go to the gym almost every day, and I love running San Diego's beautiful trails. Just this past year, I've started competing in Spartan races, where I'm currently training for a Spartan Ultra in North Lake Tahoe, which is a 30-mile, 60-obstacle course race, which should take me nearly 12 hours to complete. And I included the picture that you see on the right because you see my Dexcom CGM on my left arm. And this picture was taken while I was doing a monkey bar obstacle during one of my most recent Spartan races in July. So today we're going to be going over everything from the very basics to some more complicated things that you as type 3s can learn and even share with your type 1. To start with blood glucose, which is simply just the amount of glucose in your blood, this term is often interchangeable with blood sugar. The associated blood sugar ranges here are what most endocrinologists will recommend, but of course, type 3s do ask your type 1s what he or she considers a normal blood sugar, a high blood sugar, and a low blood sugar. You may also be familiar with specific terms associated with these high and low blood sugars in which a high blood sugar is a hyperglycemia and a low blood sugar is a hypoglycemia. So how does our body allow glucose to enter the cell from the blood? It uses, our body uses insulin, which is a hormone that allows glucose in the blood to enter the cell. And as we can see in this small movie, the insulin acts as a key to unlock the cell to allow glucose to enter. However, without any insulin, the glucose stays in our blood, creating a high blood sugar and ultimately type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a disorder in which your very own immune system destroys your pancreatic beta cells, which make insulin. As such, your glucose cannot enter your cells anymore, causing high blood sugars and type 1 diabetes. I remember when I was diagnosed, with type 1 diabetes, my blood sugar was actually over 500 in the ER, and I've had friends who have been diagnosed at over 1,000. And some common symptoms with type 1 diabetes include weight loss. I actually uh, ended up losing 10 pounds of liquid in one night before my parents rushed me to the ER. Excessive drinking, excessive urination, and excessive fatigue. And all this may seem very overwhelming, but do not worry. There are many treatment options that can be available to us diabetics. But before we delve into those treatments, I would like to differentiate type 1 from type 2 diabetes. Type 1 and type 2 have different causes in that type 1 is caused by an immune system attack on your pancreatic beta islet cells. As such, the pancreas cannot make any more insulin, leading to abnormally high blood sugars. Type 2, on the other hand, is caused by the cells becoming unresponsive to the insulin, where your pancreas can still make the insulin, it's just the insulin doesn't function properly anymore, it cannot unlock the cell. Type 1 and type 2 also have different treatments, in that type 1 is treated through multiple daily insulin injections and continuous blood sugar monitoring, and type 2 is treated with lifestyle changes like diet, exercise, as well as different medications. So now this talk is going to focus only on type 1 diabetes. And when I was diagnosed with type 1, 
My biggest fear was I would not be able to do the same activities I did before my diagnosis. And this reason was because I was going to have to change my lifestyle so much due to type 1. However, over the past nine years, I found that to be quite untrue. We as type 1s can do anything that we want. The only difference is that we need to monitor our blood sugar to keep it in range. One common assumption of type 1 diabetics is that we are not allowed and we cannot eat anything sweet. And this is flat out untrue. All we really need to do is just give insulin for it and monitor our blood sugars. Actually, when my girlfriend and I make dinner, we'll always share a slice of cake because it's our favorite dessert as a couple. And you guys as type 3s can actually help us by occasionally checking in with to see how our blood sugars are or even carb counting with us, something I will go into in a little bit. So what happens when your type 1's blood sugar is out of range? Here I will bring you up to speed on what us type 1's do when our blood sugar is either too high or too low. If our blood sugar is high, we give insulin to make it go down. And if our blood sugar is low, we need to eat or drink something to bring our blood sugar back up. Some healthy examples include things like fruit or even juice, but I like to stick to the unhealthy stuff like Sprite because it tastes very good. If our blood sugar is very low or urgent low, we need to eat or drink something sweet as soon as possible in order to avoid a diabetic pass out. And this is actually your time to shine type threes because you can help us by getting us something sweet and staying with us until our blood sugars go back up. In some cases, your type one may be passed out if their blood sugar is too low, at which point you'll want to give glucagon, but we'll go over that later towards the end of the talk today. So on the last slide, we said that we type ones need to give insulin when our blood sugars are too high, right? So now we're going to talk about several ways to give ourselves insulin. The first way is through using an insulin pen. And here we require two pens. The first one is the long lasting insulin pen where we need to give one insulin dose every 24 hours because that dose lasts 24 hours. The second one is the fast acting insulin pen, which is used multiple times a day, either when our blood sugars are too high or whenever we're about to eat something. Another way is through an insulin inhaler called a Frezza. This works similarly to fast acting insulin. However, we still need to use the long lasting basal insulin pen every 24 hours. And now a more popular and sophisticated way of giving insulin is through an insulin pump. This device delivers only the fast acting insulin. And what that means is it's nice because we don't have to use the long lasting basal insulin pen anymore. And there are actually many different types of insulin pump companies which offer their own version of an insulin pump with its unique features. And another nice part about it is that they keep getting more and more technologically advanced to make diabetes management easier. So we're going to switch gears from technologies that give us insulin to technologies that will help us know where our blood sugars are at. And we can, there's two different technologies here, where the first one is the blood glucose meter, which works by measuring how much sugar is in a drop of blood from a simple finger prick. And although it may give an accurate sugar level, too many of these finger pricks can cause pain over time. And I can attest to this because during the first year of me being a diabetic, I was pricking my fingers 15 to 20 times a day. And then I was upgraded to a more sophisticated technology called the continuous glucose monitor, which gives a real time blood sugar readings about every five minutes without the use of finger pricks. What's cool about this is it allows us type ones to track our blood sugars whenever we want, and we can even share it with you type threes. And on top of that, the finger numbness is completely gone. And one example of this CGMs is the Dexcom continuous glucose monitor. This device measures our blood sugar every five minutes. And I've used the Dexcom CGM for nearly eight years, and it's made my diabetes management so much easier. The Dexcom CGM comes in three components. The first one is, the, is a Dexcom sensor, which is an adhesive that injects a thread inside your body to measure your blood sugar. The second is a Dexcom transmitter, which attaches to the sensor and sends your blood sugars to a receiver or your smartphone and smartwatch. 
And then lastly, we have our Dexcom receiver or our smartphone or smartwatch apps. One nice feature about the Dexcom is it contains an algorithm that not only gives us our current blood sugars, but also a trend arrow and a trend graph. And as you can see on the picture on the right, these trend arrows can actually let the user know if your blood sugar is going up, going down, or just staying the same. So with that said, we're going to go over how to read a blood sugar value using a Dexcom CGM. So first, we're going to look at the blood sugar value. If the blood sugar was within a normal range, the number will be displayed in gray. And as we can see on the example on the right, the number is 110, and that's within the 70 to 180 range, and so that will be displayed as gray. If your blood sugar is above your normal range, the number will be displayed in yellow and be considered a high blood sugar. If your number is below your normal range, it will be displayed in red and considered a low blood sugar. And if your blood sugar is under 55, your blood sugar will be considered an urgent low and will also be displayed in red. So secondly, you should look at the trend arrow because these trend arrows are especially helpful in assessing how to treat a low or high blood sugar. And lastly, we should look at the trend graph because this ensures how accurate these trend arrows are. And what's even better about the Dexcom is its sharing feature. It allows us type 1s to share our blood sugars with you type 3s. And type 3s include people like your family members, your friends, and even medical professionals. I have my girlfriend who follows me, my parents, my roommates, and even Dr. Edelman because he loves to bug me every single time my blood sugar is just a little bit too low. And you can also have up to 10 followers simultaneously, which is another great feature about the Dexcom. So in the past, these continuous glucose monitors and these insulin pumps have not been able to talk to one another. However, over the last handful of years, these two technologies have finally been able to communicate with one another. And so they've been merged to create a hybrid closed loop system. This device automatically modifies your insulin delivery based on your blood sugar to improve your time in normal range. So what that means is that if it sees your blood sugar is going up, it will give you more insulin to bring your blood sugar back down. However, if it sees that your blood sugar is going low, it will give you less insulin to bring your blood sugar back up to normal range. And so in terms of the components for the hybrid closed loop system, it is made up of a continuous glucose monitor, an insulin pump, also an algorithm, which automatically adjusts insulin delivery. And this technology is very helpful in avoiding low blood sugars thanks to its exercise and sleep setting. And I can attest to this because this setting actually helped my family and me sleep much better at night because it avoided these low blood sugars. And on top of that, there's also many different options you can choose from. There's the Medtronic 670G, where they're actually coming out with a new one soon, the Tandem Control IQ, the do-it-yourself looping with an old Medtronic or an Omnipod pump, and I've actually been looping since March of 2020, and this has drastically increased my time and range. And actually, if you look at the top right corner, you'll see a smiling Dr. Edelman who would agree with me. And then we also have the Omnipod 5, which is the newest hybrid closed loop system that has come to the market. So now that you type 3s have become more familiar with all the range of diabetic technologies, we're going to transition to something a little bit more less technology-based and more you-based, and this phenomenon is known as counting carbs. I won't lie, this part took me and my family so long to get good at, and even after all these years, I'm still not perfect at counting carbs. But I can still give you type 3 some tips on how to count carbs for your type 1. So your first instinct should be to look for the nutrition facts of your food. Franchise restaurants, fast food joints, and grocery foods should all have some form of a nutritional label. For restaurants, you should just look specifically at the carbohydrate count of the food, and this can be found in the PDF nutritional label um, on their website. And lastly, we also have groceries, which look specific. Which you can look specifically at the total serving size and the total carbohydrate count. 
And so if you look to the right, you'll see that these two details are actually boxed in green. And the general rule of thumb when you cook food from the grocery from groceries from the grocery store is you can find that your carbohydrate count will change based on how much food you're going to eat. So here we're going to try a couple quick examples. So you're making a mashed potato dish for your type one with only just three potatoes. Based on the nutritional label on the right, how many carbs will be found in this dish? There are three options in which you can choose from, 18 grams, 36 grams, and nine or nine grams of carbs. And if you selected 18 grams of carbs, you would be correct. So why is that? We, you use three potatoes to make your dish, right? And because your serving size is three potatoes and one serving size means 18 grams of carbs, that means that three potatoes mean equates 18 grams of carbs. And so ultimately you're going to be preparing 18 grams of carbs for your type one. So now let's try this question again, but with a little bit of a twist. Your, your type one loved your mashed potatoes so much that you that he begged you to, to make some more, right? And so this time you're gonna be making some more mashed potatoes, except you're gonna be using six potatoes this time. So how many carbs is your dish? Again, there's three options you can choose from, 18 grams of carbs, 36 grams of carbs, or even nine grams of carbs. So if you selected 36 grams of carbs, that would be correct. Now let's walk through why that is. If you use six potatoes to make your dish, that means you doubled the serving size. If you doubled the serving size, that means you also doubled the total carb count, giving you 18 grams of carbs times two, giving you ultimately 36 grams of carbs. So once we finish counting carbs, we need to bolus for our food as type ones. Bolusing is the action of giving insulin from an insulin pen or in a pump. And it's a very simple three-step process. So once we've counted our carbs for our meal, we want to divide our carb total by the insulin to carb ratio, which was determined by my which is determined by your endocrinologist and also the type one. And so what you're gonna do is you're going, just going to inject the number of insulin units calculated with the fast acting insulin pen. And it's actually even easier when using the pump because the pump already has the insulin to carb ratio set in it. So it does the math for you. And all you really have to do here is just inject the, what the pump recommends you. A very important note here is I like to give myself a little bit less insulin if I find my blood sugar to be running a little bit low. So type three is here. It is important because if your type one's, if you're finding that your type one's blood sugar is running just a little low, just advise them to give a little bit less insulin when you guys are going out to eat. One of the most frightening parts of to living with type one, speaking of low blood sugars, is the fact that if we go too low, we can pass out. And that said, if we do pass out, someone needs to give a glucagon shot to make our blood sugars go back up. And it can't be us because we're already passed out. So at that point, it's on you guys, type threes. And so if you guys don't know what glucagon is, glucagon is just a hormone that helps raise your blood sugar by releasing the stored glucose from the liver. So listed here at the bottom of the slide are three ways to administer glucagon with their specific descriptions. In that we have the glucagon injection kit, Gvoke's Hypopen, and Lily's Baxamy Nasal Spray. So type threes who are watching this, it is critical that you know which glucagon device your type one uses, master how to use it, and also communicate with your type one where he or she stores it. And although each glucagon administration device is different, the process to give it is pretty much the same. And then first, Type threes, it is very important that you do not panic during this scenario because it is your time to save our lives. I know it can be quite stressful, but you should not panic. After quickly looking at how, our blood, how low our blood sugar is, just find our glucagon device and give it to us as soon as possible. And if you don't know how to use it, there should be instructions for using it. Lastly, your type one should be able to wake up within a few minutes of giving the glucagon However, sometimes this may not happen, so at that point you should call 911 for help. Again, the most important lesson here is for you type threes to get trained and remain calm because this will ensure your success at literally saving our lives. 
So like I said before, there are multiple ways of giving glucagon, one of them being the glucagon injection kit. Uh, this is a very bulky and hard to use version of glucagon. So I would refer to the two other alternatives because we can see here that it's a multi-step multi process. And these other two alternatives are much easier to use. Or the Givo Kypo pen is only a two-step process in order to give a shot. And it can also be stored at room temperature as well as the Baxamy nasal spray, which also requires two steps and can also be stored at room temperature. And I actually wanted to give you guys a personal story with what re with regards to the Baxamy here. So one night my girlfriend came out of the restroom and found me unconscious on my bed. After checking when my blood sugar was under 35, she quickly acted by taking the Baxamy out of her purse because I, we already communicated that if this scenario were to arise, let's have it already be in her purse so she knows where the Baxamy is. And because I already trained her and she's already mastered on how to use the Baxamy, she used the Baxamy correctly. And she ended up saving my life. And it's thanks to her that I'm here talking to you today. So with that, I just wanted to thank you for listening. Thank, be sure to head to TCOYD to check out more videos in their video vault. And also be sure to join TCYD's Type 3 Facebook group. So again, I hope you learned a lot today and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.